Hello Virgo and welcome to Soul Sundays. Virgo, it's a quick three card spread, one for your mind, body and soul for the week ahead. So let's get started. Universe and angels, messages and guides, my higher self, I call upon you now to give me clear and accurate reading for the sign of Virgo. Please show me what they need to hear, not what they want to hear for the week ahead. Spirit, can I please have three cards, one for mind, body and soul. All right, my beautiful Virgos, um, great reading for you last week. I was talking all about um, uh, finding your balance and having a moment of silent bliss. This week, it's pretty intense, it's intense energies. My goodness, if I could speak. Um, we have Venus and Capricorn, and that's important because Venus rules uh, wealth, beauty, love, abundance. But we also have Jupiter moving into Capricorn. So Jupiter's been in Sagittarius for the last gosh, 12 months, right? Why did I need to think about that? Um, for the last 12 months, and we haven't had it in Capricorn since 2007. So it's a big energy shift. Jupiter in its home sign of Sagittarius is where it feels most comfortable, right? It's the planet of expansion, good luck, fortune, abundance, wealth, which is why it's important that Venus is also in Capricorn at the same time. It's a big week about material assets and wealth, right? Um, but what it means by being in the sign of Sagittarius is that its home sign is we've spent the last 12 months really thinking, dreaming big, thinking, planning, what did we want to hope and achieve and actually bring to for the forefront, right? This year, um, with it moving into January as we're going to 2020, it's now about not just thinking big, but acting big, right? If you've been working towards something, putting the plans in motion for something that you're trying to achieve in 2020, then this is the year that you're actually going to um, and bring those goals into fruition okay you're actually going to put a plan together that's what jupiter and capricorn will do it'll help you be organized put a plan together to achieve those things what's really important about this energy too is that it's about stepping up to the responsibility about creating a better future for ourselves and also for the rest of the planet right um, but important thing to note try not to give too much of your power away set your boundaries um, i also want to just do one more little update on this um, shift into Capricorn for those that are turning um, 24 36 48 60 72 84 multiples of 12 this will be or could be in 2020 if this if that is your birthday your Jupiter return now for those that watch me on the channel my regulars you will know that I'm a Capricorn Sun my birthday is on January the 11th I'm in a master number which has a lot to do with psychic ability, being a teacher, but it also speaks to the fact that I am one of those birthdays and I do have my Jupiter return next year, which is fantastic because that's going to mean that a lot of stuff I've been working on behind the scenes for this channel, content for you, a few other little bit of exciting things is going to start to come to fall next year. Just yay. So what does that mean for you? Right. Last week we talked about a silent bliss. This week we've got the beautiful card of the three of angels clarification. Now, this is not the most ideal card to get, okay? And it's not surprising that you've pulled this given the energy that was kind of there last week and also what's happening with this major shift of Jupiter, you know, our biggest, largest planet in the solar system moving into Capricorn. The Three of Angels in traditional tarot speaks about a heartbreak, okay? It is the card of swords, Three of Swords. So often it can speak about threes a crowd type thing, third party involvement, and most tarot readers will give you that kind of basic um, breakdown and it could very well be the case you could very well be going through that kind of heartbreak this week um, and really wanting to get a clarification as the cards titled on where you stand what I love about this deck though if you have a look at how she's illustrated it's like she's an angel with her wings and feeling a little bit bound it's like she's got this red ribbon tied around her but it's not really tied it's quite loose it's about really clarifying your mental thoughts and how you're moving forward okay I want to find it for you in the book because there's this really great passage just bear with me for a second um, so as I said to you, often speaks about, you know, heartbreak, sorrow, you know, that kind of thing. But there's this passage in here that says, um, describes the card. There's always a description. It says, in a colorful sea of creation, beyond the, beyond the clouds above earth, a beautiful angel observes humanity. She can hardly bear the hurt she feels as humans hold themselves away from love and truth. But she has forgotten her truth. The stars stream brilliant authenticity to her mind and her truth is highlighted. Right, see the stars at the top? 
The card's described as clarification for a reason, okay? It's about finding love again, finding your truth. And it says, through the experience of hurt and pain, you come to know what you don't want and become clearer about what you do want. Please know that nothing has gone wrong. And the meaning says, the three of angel senses you're ready to move beyond the pain caused by another's actions or words. There is enough anguish over a delay or a missed opportunity. Perhaps too much importance was placed on a specific outcome that did not eventuate. There is the number of joy, three is the number of joy, and this is where a blockage lies. Allow the pain to enter and exit through the wounds of your heart. Don't fight against it. Don't fight against it or lose yourself in wonderings over why this has happened. Let all just be as it is. You have not done anything wrong. As you embrace your pain, it will subside and healing can begin. So for a lot of you, I've talked about this in your reading all year and your yearly reading. It's been a year about love for you, okay? Love for yourself, love for others, choosing love over fear. And, you know, love is such a bastardized word. We use it all the time without really any recourse or the actual true meaning to it. But I feel like if you break down everything that you've been through this year and spend this week in clarification of what was actually um, meant to happen, of what it meant, of what you still feel for it now, this is the week of letting yourself go, right? Untying the shackles. And in doing that, if you can free yourself from that mental bind, that repetitive story that you play over and over again about whatever happened, then you will start to see a massive shift as Jupiter comes into your sign. And it's going to affect all of us differently. I mean, Capricorn's your sister sign, first of all, it's an earth sign like you, but it's also going to affect you in terms of your health, your wealth, everything that you've been trying to create and build in this world, okay? This is an interesting card that you've drawn for your health. And I want to actually have a look at the book for this. It's come up with do more research. So I'm going to just read it to you in case, because I can't remember exactly what it says. And I don't, don't want to miss anything for you. I don't have to read the book for these cards because I've used them all the time. Um, it says healthcare is a partnership between a patient, a healer and God. This card serves as a reminder that it's important to fulfill your role. Don't remain passive. Instead, listen to the divine whispers within your thoughts and feelings, which are the voices of God and Archangel Raphael guiding your steps in the healing process. Trust your feelings and know that you have rights and options. So it's talking about getting a second, a third or a fourth opinion about a health issue that's been weighing you down. Now, remember I said Venus moved into Capricorn this week and Venus is the planet of good fortune. I'm sorry, of wealth, of health, of beauty. So if it is a health issue for you, then you need to actually start doing some more research of what about whatever it is that's holding you back. Um, read the latest studies, you know, just try and um, educate yourself a little bit more about whatever may have changed for you personally. I also want you to actually speak up to your GP. You know how often we go to the GP when we're sick or when we have a cold, but we don't have to go to actually look when we're in a healthy state of being to actually try and make ourselves better. And by healthy state of being, I mean, you know, not having the menial cold or whatever it is that may be holding us back. Um, so I think that maybe if you can open that conversation, that would be important. Or maybe look for an alternative healer or healthcare provider, okay? A functional nutritionist could be something that could help you too. Don't know what that is? Google it. All right, your spiritual message for this week is about consistency. Um, you know this, Virgo. You are one of the most incredible signs when it comes to putting a plan together and for achieving your dreams. When you truly make your mind up to achieve something and that you want something, then you usually go out and get it. It takes a bit of time because you are an earth sign. You like to plan thoroughly, um, but you normally reach your goal, right? This week, the message clearly is that if you want to achieve all of those things I've been talking to you about, if you want to take advantage of this expansive energy in Jupiter that's coming next year, this incredible energy that could just blow your world up, right? That can bring everything in that you've been trying to manifest, then it's important to be consistent, okay? Let let go of all the crap that's gone down, even if you didn't get the apology, even if someone ghosted you, even if someone broke your heart, even if you lost a partner and you're grieving, okay? It's important to pull the knives out of your heart one by one, go through the healing process so that you can start working consistently towards whatever it is that your heart desires, okay? All right, my loves, it's a bit of a heavy reading for this week. It flows on from last week, but I just want you to know nothing ever stays in this kind of energy for too long. This heavy hitter with Jupiter moving into Capricorn, okay? So it's big energy for you. Usually when a sign does this shift, it's all because 
after being in its home sign, that of Sagittarius, we're being asked to let go of systems, of paradigms, of ways of thinking, of lovers, of friends, of certain ways of behavior so that we can herald in a new 12 years. It's not a light kind of energy, okay? And with that, if you haven't done any kind of release and letting go, this is the message for you, okay? All right, I wish you a fantastic week. Much love and light. If this video uh, resonated with you, please hit the thumbs up button. It helps the channel more than you know. I am available for personal readings. Again, details are below in the description bar. If you're interested in booking in with me, I'm up to date, so please email me. I'm also doing the yearly readings for 2020. So um, I'll put those out for the channel very soon. But if you're wanting to get one for yourself, the full yearly forecast details are below about how you can book in as well. All right. Again, I wish you much love and light. Hang in there and I'll be back with you next Sunday. Take care.